Calypso Conch, the tale of a queen conch and a peacock flounder. Written and illustrated by Sue True. Who goes there? wondered Blink, the peacock flounder anxiously as, with a flick of his fins, he sprinkled himself with sand and lay perfectly flat. With one eye swiveling left and the other swiveling right, Blink looked all around as he searched urgently for possible danger. Something was coming! It was traveling through the seagrass towards him. Blink swallowed nervously. It was getting closer, and he wasn't sure whether to stay where he was or make a dash for it. He must hide! In just a few seconds, he had changed the color of his body to camouflage himself on the sandy sea floor where he lived. He lay still, watching. Suddenly, the seagrass parted and a majestic queen conch appeared. It was his friend, Calypso. She was a large sea snail and she was pushing herself across the sea floor in a series of jerky movements, thrusting the weight of her shell forward using her single foot. She stopped and peered at Blink through her long, stalk-like eyes. She had something exciting to tell him. Calypso had grown up in the shallow, warm waters of the Caribbean Sea and now, at just four years old, was a beautiful lady. The lip of her shell was a pretty pink inside and flared like a dancer's swirling skirt. She had made the shell herself in a clever clockwise spiral and lived in it. With the arrival of summer, Calypso had gathered with the other queen conchs, attracting the attention of a handsome male. Together, they had decided to start a family. She now declared proudly to Blink, I'm going to lay 500,000 eggs! Calypso soon settled down to lay her eggs. Much to Blink's amazement, all of the tiny eggs, the size of a dot, were attached to a sticky, jelly-like string that went on and on and on, piling up over one another into an egg mass. They became so sandy in the process that they soon began to look like sand. After many hours, Calypso was finally finished and left her eggs to grow. Their sandy appearance meant they would hopefully be safe from fish that might want to eat them. She would lay another eight egg masses over the summer, producing as many as four million babies. After four days, the conch eggs began to hatch and the tiny babies floated up towards the surface. They didn't look anything like their parents, yet. Each tiny see-through baby conch had a delicate shell and two floppy lobes covered in minute hairs that moved continually. They twisted and turned as they drifted. For the next few weeks, these tiny conchs, called villagers, would eat minuscule plants that floated past, swallowing them whole. In the vast ocean, they joined millions of other tiny baby fishes, squids, jellyfish, shrimps, and crabs, which together are known as zooplankton. Zooplankton is an important food for many sea creatures, from very small fish to one of the biggest mammals of all, the giant humpback whale. The huge mouth of the humpback whale scoops up vast quantities of seawater and filters out all the zooplankton through sieve-like plates called baleen. Of the millions of eggs laid by each conch, very few survive this dangerous time. As the tiny conch babies continued to grow over the next three weeks, they changed shape from two lobes to four lobes, and then to six. All the while they were getting bigger and heavier until they reached the size of a grain of sand and began to sink. Within several hours of touching down on the seafloor, the baby conchs completely changed their shape to suit their new surroundings. Instead of six floppy swimming lobes, they now had a proper shell to hide in and two eyes on long stalks to see out. One of them landed softly next to a clump of delicate mermaid wine glass seaweed where a long snout seahorse was hiding. The conch was so tiny that it was very hard to see. The baby conch would stay hidden in the sand for a year, reaching out for seaweed to eat with its snout and special tongue. Growing gradually bigger, building its shell, it would often gaze upwards in wonder at the many rainbow-colored fish that swam above. One day in the distance, the baby conch saw a hawksbill turtle. 
It was Tilly. She had returned to lay her eggs and was now feeding peacefully, waiting until the sun had set to leave the sea and make her nest on land. She was eating sponges on the coral reef and, unlike her cousin, the loggerhead turtle, was no danger to the young conch buried in the sand. Rays of fading summer sun were streaming through the shallow Caribbean waters and Calypso and Blink moved playfully together across the sandy seafloor. You know, Calypso, Blink said, reminiscing, I didn't always look like this. I was one of three million eggs and when I hatched, I was a tiny clear fish with an eye on each side of my head. Then, when I was still very small, my right eye moved over to the left side of my face and I began swimming sideways along the sand. But Calypso wasn't listening. She had come to a sudden stop and drawn her eyes in sharply. Blink immediately saw why. In front of them was a heap of lifeless conch shells. They had reached an octopus lair, and Calypso knew that conch was an octopus favorite dinner. Calypso and Blink moved cautiously behind the octopus, hoping not to be seen. They weren't looking where they were going and bumped into a spiny West Indian sea star. Ouch, they cried in unison. A dark shape hovered overhead and scared the friends, but it was only Star the juvenile hawksbill turtle. She had just returned from five years traveling on the ocean currents and was back to feed on the reef and grow up in shallower waters. Star loved looking at sea stars and had paused to admire this bright red one. As the winter months approached, the water began to get a little cooler and rough seas often came to the bay where Calypso lived. The strong flared lip on her shell stopped her from being turned over by the waves, though the shifting sand partly covered her. A spotted eagle ray swam dangerously close and Calypso knew this ray might eat her. She kept perfectly still so the ray didn't see her and it was soon out of sight once more. Late one afternoon, the shadow of a boat passed over Calypso and an anchor landed in the sand nearby. Calypso peeked out from under her shell. She saw two men jump into the water and dive down. They were looking for conch. They swam over Calypso, not seeing her, but some of the other queen conchs were not so lucky. They were caught by the divers and taken back to the boat. The men would take their catch home to their families for supper and sell their beautiful shells. With the passing of a year, masses of young conchs had begun to emerge from their hiding places below the sand. Their shells were much thinner and a different shape from their parents. Calypso and Blink had fun trying to spot the conchs as they hid on the seafloor. How many can you see? A clump of seaweed moved suddenly next to them and two eyes appeared. Hello, it said in a deep voice. Calypso and Blink jumped. They hadn't noticed the old conch beside them. His shell was thick and warm and so covered in weed that even a little damselfish was hiding in it. Gosh, said Calypso, how long have you lived here? The old conch peered from under his shell. Some 30 or 40 years. I've seen many generations of conchs mature in this bay, he said wisely. Together they watched the young conchs, wishing them good luck in the next stage of their life's journey hoping they'd grow up and lay millions of eggs, ensuring many future generations of beautiful queen conchs.